This time on the Gadget Show Web TV, John takes his own voyage to the bottom of the sea. Life Centre to test out underwater cameras. I bring you the latest gadget and tech news, and Otis gets all animated over a stop motion webcam game. Hello and welcome to Web TV. This week we've been finding ways to keep you entertained over the summer. Now, if it's raining outside, like it always seems to be, then Otis has found the perfect site to help while away a wet afternoon with a webcam. But first, if you want to brave this drizzly British summer or are lucky enough to be off for some sun, sea and sand, John's taking a look at waterproof cameras to help capture the moment. <laughs> There's been a whole rash of new waterproof cameras appearing on the market in the past few months, so I thought I'd take a look at both ends of this uh, apparently rather fertile new market. At the entry level end, I've got Fuji's new Z33WP, and at the top expensive end, I've got Canon's new PowerShot D10. Fuji's Z33 is very light and compact. It's actually scarcely any bigger than their normal ultra-compact cameras like the Z30. Except, obviously, this one is waterproof. It's waterproof down to three meters for up to two hours at a time. And it conforms to standard IP68, which means that it's fairly dustproof as well. So it shouldn't have much difficulty standing up to a bit of uh, fairly intensive beach use. Now, it actually feels reassuringly tough. There's uh, an extra layer of glass over the lens, a rubber seal surrounding the flap where the battery and memory card are held. The turn on time is quick, you're ready to go in a couple of seconds, and the shutter delay is respectable. Everything is controlled by this simple rubberized push button interface. There are some unusual features though, including a group self timer function where you set the number of faces you want in a picture, and the camera waits to fire the shutter until it's detected that number. There are some less endearing quirks though. Um, to do simple exposure compensation, you actually have to go into the camera's manual mode, for example. Having said all that, picture quality in bright light is really rather good. You're not paying an enormous price for all that waterproofness. Although colours are slightly less bright than you'd expect, you can compensate for that partly by going into Fuji's vivid chrome setting. And the lens quality on the edges of frame isn't too hot either, it's a, really a bit soft. Although when it gets dark, the flash gives good, reasonably powerful, even exposure. For a more challenging test, however, I decided to subject the Fuji to the relatively dark underwater world of our local Sea Life Centre. In the relative dark of the fish tanks, the Fuji's pictures became a bit noisy, even at 200 ISO, and it was difficult to freeze the fast-moving fish, even when you boosted the ISO further. Video wasn't bad, as easy to edit AVI files, but again, it was a bit noisy. The camera's also quite slow, zooming in and out and reviewing pictures. Overall, I feel the Fuji's natural habitat is sunny swimming pools and beaches. Canon's more expensive PowerShot D10 is waterproof down to 10 meters rather than the 3 meters of the Fuji, and it's a much bulkier camera. It actually looks a bit like a, a sort of mini submarine, but out here in bright light it feels very responsive, and the picture quality is very good. It's almost up there with the very best non-waterproof compact cameras. It just loses a little in the way of contrast and sharpness, possibly again due to the extra layer of glass over the lens though the camera does share its menu system with the uh, non-waterproof Ixus range, which means it's a very good menu system. The only slight uh, downside in normal conditions, I think, is the flash, which doesn't give quite as even a coverage as I'd have hoped. If you fancy spending even more money on your Canon, for an extra hundred quid, you can buy this uh, intriguing accessory kit, which gives you a rather splendid case, complete with clip, three different face plates that you can screw on, possibly for camouflage in different situations, and a selection of very uh, nautical looking sort of lanyards which uh, can be secured onto the corners of the camera in these various sockets for all manner of uh, strapping type duties. 
Underwater pictures were slightly better with the Canon, clearer and less noisy. Plus, the wider maximum lens aperture meant faster shutter speeds and better freezing of motion. But it wasn't a transformation. Shutter and focusing delays meant it was still difficult keeping up with the fish. Video was significantly better and brighter than the Fuji's though, and the bright LCD screen helped too. The D10 is undoubtedly a more serious underwater camera than the Fuji, and it can produce really quite good pictures in quite dark conditions, but you still might find yourself struggling with fast moving subjects. Great news for you three-dimensional fans out there because YouTube are testing 3D video clips with a range of different viewing options. And with 3D webcams and camcorders growing more in popularity, this can only be a good thing. The prototype page comes from Google's incentive which allows staff to spend one day a week working on personal projects. And as you can see from the test page, their time hasn't been wasted. The clip features a run-of-the-mill trade show video but with the option to view in several different ways. You will of course need 3D glasses to get the full effect, but there is a drop-down menu to select the type of glasses you're using, either the red, blue or green magenta design. Unfortunately, the most effective 3D methods used in the latest films such as Ice Age 2 and Disney's upcoming film Up use polarised light and spectacles that cannot be recreated on traditional home PCs just yet. Sadly, don't expect YouTube to go completely 3D overnight. Any 3D video clips you do come across will be a rare treat. And Google employees responsible for the page are reported as saying that there won't be a speedy turnaround on any bugs. Now, if you're still enjoying your Wii Fit but fancy something new, then you might be interested to hear that Sega have finally announced that they'll be bringing Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll to the Wii. And for those of you familiar with the franchise, you'll know this will go hand in hand with the Wii Balance Board due to the aim of the game. Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll is expected for release in early 2010, but if, like me, you're far too impatient to wait until then to see what it's all about, Sega have released a teaser video to tickle your gaming taste buds. <laughs> whether Nintendo's new peripheral, the Wii Motion Plus, will be incorporated into this game. But expect more news on this game and many more from the Gamescom show in Cologne next month. Right, so you've got a webcam, a computer and the internet, but you're bored. What are you going to do? Well, Otis has found a way of pulling all three together to have a good time. It's a stop-motion animation-making website. Why, what were you thinking? If you fancy yourself as a bit of a Nick Park, I found a website for you. It enables you to use your camera, which is probably already an existing part of your laptop, to make stop, go, animation. Webcam stop motion, they call it. My animation is going to tell a story. Um, it's about a plane that builds itself under the watchful eye of the office mascot. And then there's a little surprise. OK, first frame. Now, you've got to remember that everything that's in shot has to remain constant other than what you're animated. So I have to make sure I'm right out. Taking the first frame. Three, two, one. Captured. One of the great features about this is the previous frame remains on the left so you can see where your new position is in relation to the previous frame. So you've got the other frame there. There we go, so continuing folding, making my plane. And I can keep reviewing my progress so far in the live preview box. Take shape now. 
Now, once you've made your animation, you can publish it, upload it to the site. It's there for 30 days, along with hundreds of others. So you can check out what other people are doing as well. It's limited in that it only allows you to record 20 frames, but that never stopped Nick Park making a masterpiece over a very short period of time, did it. So get on, it's cheap. The equipment already exists as part of your computer and it's fun. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Cobble that together in like five minutes. Well, sadly, that's you lot for this week, but we'll be back next week with more exclusive news and reviews. The Gadget Show itself is back on television on Monday, August the 3rd at 8 on 5, so be sure to tune in. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter for daily updates on the show and become a fan of our Facebook page. Also keep an eye out on our website for special video content. We have a preview of the new Halo 3 ODST game coming out very soon. See ya.